Grace and peace to you. I'm here to share with you something wonderful and exciting that's going on at Crossroads. It's the return of Crossroads Small Group Bible Studies. Yes, that's right. Crossroads Small Group Bible Studies begins February 28th. February 28th. Please mark that date on your calendar. Our theme this year is Gospel Foundations, Experiencing True Freedom Through Christ. A wonderful theme. We have fantastic facilitators for this session. On Saturdays at 8.30, we have Cheryl Smith. On Sundays at 5 p.m., we have Donald Sims. On Mondays uh, at 7 p.m., we have Brian and Kendra Lewis. On Tuesdays at 7.15 p.m., we have Omar Shaw. On Thursdays at 7 p.m., we have Leroy and Fifi Woolridge. Please select the session that you want to be a part of, the one that fits your time schedule, and please join. Join in at the beginning, and let's get all of the good stuff that God has for us. We want to learn together, we want to grow together, and we want to be examples of Christ wherever we are. We can only do this when we experience the freedom that he promised us. But please, email your, your preferred times to C6... <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Good morning, saints and friends. I hope you had a wonderful week because we are here to celebrate Christ. We are here to worship Him. We're back in our sanctuary and we're glad to be home. I looked at our worship service this morning and the top it says, Crossroads Worship Celebration. That's a key word, celebration. We're here to celebrate the Lord, the living Christ. Throughout the past several weeks, there's been confusion, chaos, calamity. But through it all, God is still sovereign. He is still on the throne, worthy of our praise. So wherever you are, I pray that you have a reason to worship him and to celebrate his goodness, his mercy, and his love. So wherever you are, let's just give him your praise, your worship. Let's just give him thanks, because he's worthy of it, amen? Amen. In just a few minutes, we're going to have some songs of worship, and then we're going to come to the table and celebrate our God. Uh, yes, I said celebrate. That's the theme this morning. We're going to celebrate Him. So grab your elements. Prepare them. Right after our time of worship, we're going to go to the table in fellowship. Amen? Let us pray. Father, we thank you so much that you have been faithful. You brought us back to this house of worship. And we're grateful. We're thankful that you kept us, covered us, provided for us, assured us, walked with us. You've spoken to us and you've used us. So yes, Lord, we want to celebrate you. We worship you in spirit and in truth, laying it all before you, God. Receive our worship. May it be a sweet aroma to your nostrils. We're here to worship you. You're the object of our praise. It's to you, God, we give you all. Because you gave us your all. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now let's welcome our worship leader who's going to take us before his presence. Good morning. I'm so excited to worship. And we do want to stay in a place of worship. You can stand now and we're going to worship the Lord together. And we're really going to focus on what it is to come into the presence of the Lord and what it is to worship Him. When the music fades and all is stripped away and I simply come Longing just to bring something that's of worth, 
that will bless your heart. I'll bring you more than a song, for a song in itself is not what you have required. You search much deeper within, through the way things appear. You're looking into my heart. And it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it, when it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. King of endless words. No one could express how much you deserve. Though I'm weak and poor, all I have is yours, every single breath. I'll bring you more than a song, for a song in itself is not what you have required. Search much deeper within, through the way things appear, you're looking into my heart. Thank you, Lord, for using us when we are imperfect. We thank you, Lord, for being the perfect God. We thank you, Lord, for being strong and mighty when we are weak. Thank you, Lord, for filling in the gaps for us. I ask you now to sit in the presence of the Lord as we prepare for communion. Sit down in the presence of the Lord and just focus on what God is doing in our lives and who he is.
steps in and makes us stronger. I mentioned at the beginning of the service that we're going to celebrate at the table. Yes, this is a consecrated time. It's a solemn time, but it's also a time of celebration. 
What are we celebrating? Well, we're celebrating his completed work at Calvary. That's one thing. That's the main thing that we're celebrating. We're also celebrating his consistency and his constancy. His consistency. He's the same God. He's been the same God. He will always be the same God because he will never change. He's the same God yesterday, today, and will be forever. He's consistent in his love. He's consistent in his care and his compassion. He is consistent, but he's also constant. He is always there. He promised he would never leave us nor forsake us. That's the assurance that we have for those who have confessed their faith in Christ. And that's why we're here, to celebrate all of these things. We have a reason to celebrate Christ. Amen? Do you have a reason to celebrate? Yes. If you've placed your faith in Christ, you have a reason to celebrate this morning. Amidst everything that has happened in the last several weeks, the first two months of this year, Coming off of all of last year has been traumatic. It's been topsy-turvy. But his consistency and his constancy gives us reason to celebrate. So we're here at the table to celebrate his broken body and his spilled blood that gives us the strength to carry on yet another day. That night with his disciples, knowing what was going to lay ahead, He prepared his disciples as he did for us. He prepared him, them. He took the bread. He lifted it, gave thanks for it. He broke it, he gave it to them. He said, this is my body, broken for you. As often as you do this, you do this in remembrance of me. What are we remembering? All that he did from creation through redemption of history and redemptive history to today. We're remembering. Then he commanded his disciples, take it and eat all of it. Let us eat together. Likewise, he took the cup. He explained that this is a new covenant in my blood. Represents my blood that will be poured out for your sins, past and present and future. He says, as often as you do this, you're proclaiming my death and my burial, my resurrection. That's the other thing that we want to remember. Remembering that he's coming again. We're remembering that in his blood, we have strength to carry on. Then he commanded his disciples to drink all of it. Let us drink together. Amen. Now let us pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us prepare our hearts now for our pastor will bring us our message for the morning. All right, I think I'm ready now. (laughs) Everybody doing okay? I'm doing great. I'm I'm doing great. I'm doing great. 
and I'm glad to know that you are too. I'm really glad to know that you are too. Um, as we talk about today, today is the last day of February. And what does that mean? This is the last day of Black History Month. Yay! We praise God for a month of celebration, the accomplishments of African Americans to this great nation. But it's also the first day. It's the first day of the Daniel Fast. We begin the Daniel Fast today, 21 days of fasting according to how Daniel fasted with fruits and vegetables, healthy foods. But we're looking at how do we reform our eating habits? What do we do uh, to change our dietary habits? It's also the first day of Crossroads Small Groups. Amen. That's great. You know, small groups are the way that you get discipled. When you come to church, guess what? You come to church and you get preached to. But when you in a small group, you have the opportunity to discuss, to answer questions, to ask questions. And it's wonderful to be in a small group of learning and di discipleship. Our small group uh, series this time is Gospel Foundations, Experiencing True Freedom Through Christ. And we have some great facilitators. Each day we have great facilitators who are destined, who are guiding you through the small group study. And as we talk about guiding you through the small group study, we also have to say that our, we have sessions open Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday. Wednesday, no, because Wednesday is our Bible study and prayer time. Why don't you join us? 7 o'clock is on Zoom. A wonderful time to gather and to get together. The other thing that I like to say is this series of experiencing true freedom, true freedom in Christ, kind of leads into my sermon today. Kind of leads into my sermon today of freedom. My sermon topic is victory over freedom. And I know many of you are asking, why do we need to hear that? Why do we need to know that? Well, we need to know what Christ did and what the Bible commands us to do to remove strongholds in our life from experiencing true freedom, from experiencing true freedom. So would you stand with me now? And let's go to John. Let's go to John, wherever you're at. If you're at home, stand up, please. And let's go to the Gospel of John. And we want to go to John chapter 9. We want to look at verse 13. And I'm, I'm not going to read the whole passage, but I would like for you to keep your Bible open because we will refer to this over and over again today, John chapter 9. Uh, I just want to read these few verses. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had been blind. Now, the day on which Jesus had made the mud and opened the man's eyes was a Sabbath. Therefore, the Pharisees also asked him, how he had received his sight. He put mud on my eyes, the man replied, and I washed, and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God, for he does not keep the Sabbath. But others ask, how can a sinner perform such signs? So they were divided. Today, I'm going to keep preaching from this, but that's the first uh, few verses that I wanted to read to kind of set the context. Would you pray with me, please? Father, we ask that you will bless us as we read, as we study, as we receive your word today. And Father, I ask that not only will you bless us, but I ask God that you will take these lips of clay. You formed them, and allow me to speak your truth. You have not asked us to like it, but you've asked us, Lord, to be obedient to it. So, God, I pray that you will also do one more thing, and that is open our minds, open our ears, and open our hearts so that we can receive it. I ask you, God, to bind the devil who takes your word and tries to pervert it and tries to construe something that you didn't say and that is not being said. I ask God that you will bless us as we gather in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. I'm talking about victory over fear. 
Victory over fear. That's what I'm talking about. Victory over fear. In the Bible, there's a verse that we all know, and if you know it, say it along with me. He who the Son sets free is free indeed. Would you say that one more time? He who the Son sets free is free indeed. Let's say it one more time. He who the Son sets free is free indeed. When we read that scripture, when we say that scripture, many times we think about, I am free from sin. That's what we think about. But God is not just talking about free from sin. He's talking about absolute freedom. He's talking about once you're in me, you have everlasting freedom. Now, what does that mean? Absolute freedom is freedom of your mind, freedom of your body, and freedom in your soul. It's not just, okay, I'm freed from sin and I'm going to heaven anyway. It's the freedom to accept God. It's the freedom to live for him. It's the freedom that begins in your mind. It has to begin in your mind. It has to begin with your mind. The freedom that we experience, true freedom, has to start in your mind. When we hear about this everlasting freedom, it's not the freedom that tugs at you every now and then. It, okay, I went to church today and I shouted, so I'm, I'm free right now. No, it's not that kind of freedom. It's the freedom that whatever you're doing, whatever you're sitting, wherever you're sitting, whatever you are engaged in, you are totally free to express and receive what God has for you. That's what I'm talking about today. Victory over fear. <clears throat> so freedom, he who the sun sets free, is free indeed, also means a freedom from fear. A freedom from fear. It means a freedom from the phobias. It means a freedom from the, uh, from the traps that have been set a long time ago. You know, a trap is not designed to kill you. It's just designed to slow you up. So when we look at this freedom of fear, freedom from fear, I'm not just talking about financial fear. Like, you know, that fear that says, I'm not going to be able to make the payments this month. It's not that kind of fear. It's not that kind of, it's not that kind of fear that says, uh, I'm afraid of the dark. That's a very real phobia. That's a very real phobia. There are people who are actually afraid of the dark. So if you got to sleep with your light on tonight, it's okay. It's okay. That's a real phobia. But that's not the kind of fear I'm talking about today. I'm not talking about that today. I'm talking about the fear of opinions. I'm talking about the fear of opinions. And you know, opinions grip your mind. I'm talking about the fear from opinions. What am I talking about? Fear of opinions. Yes, that's exactly right. What does a fear of opinion looks like? Well, it looks like many different things. For some, it could look like a meticulous house. I got to keep my house exactly straight. It's got to be cleaned at all times. I got to have this hung up. I got to have this in order because of the opinions that some might, some might think that I'm not a good person. It results in an action forced upon you because you don't want to be thought of in an, in a, in a, uh, an un, uh, unfair term, unhealthy term. Thank you, baby. Uh, it also looks like the opinion of, I got to keep doing, I got to keep doing, and I'm guilty of this. I'm real guilty of this, of, uh, 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 of I got to keep working or else I'll be perceived as lazy. I'll be called trifling. I got to get up early in the morning. I got to work, work well, way, way, way late because I got to be productive. I'm a male. I'm a man. I've, I've got to show myself strong. I've got to be strong and mighty at all time. I don't have time to rest. I don't have time to enjoy. I, I got to be doing something. I, I always got to be doing something. I got to be fixing something. I got to re, be repairing something. I got to be moving. I got to be on the go. I got to be on the go because the workaholic 
takes over and the fear of the opinion that because you're sitting down, because you're resting, you're a lazy man. That grips me. I got to get over that. Praise God. I'm not ashamed. I know that confession is good for the soul and bad for the reputation, but I'm not afraid to tell you what's going on. Fear of opinions results in what are people going to think about my Instagram? How do I look on TikTok? Because I don't want people to think I'm a square. I want to be well-rounded. I want people to think that I'm with it. I, I'm cool. I, I got to make sure that my fashion is in line, that my hair is in order, that when I step out the house and everybody knows I'm somebody because of the fear of opinion. Now, you must always be conscious of how you look. This is very, very true. But I'm talking about the fear that goes with that opinion from somebody else about what you're doing with your life. That's a prison. When we hold someone else's opinion high, higher than God's opinion of us, we voluntarily enter into a prison of imbalance and insecurity. Let me say that again. When we hold someone else's opinion of us, when you hold someone else's opinion of you, higher than you place God's opinion of you, you voluntarily enter into a prison of imbalance in your life and insecurity in your life. The Bible says you're fearlessly and wonderfully made. The, the, the Bible says I'm pleased with you. God is giving you all these assurances, but the opinions of others will cause you to think, what am I not doing? What, what do I need to do? And that places you in a prison. You can't move. It traps you. It, it snares you. But God came to give us victory. The three opinions that I'm talking about, the three types of opinions that I'm talking about from this text are, first, the opinion of source. The opinion of source. The opinion of source. Uh, source is how, where, where, what's the basis of this? The opinion of source. You ready? In John chapter 9, uh, verses 13, uh, let me see, verses 13 through 16, Jesus has healed this blind man. The man was born blind. The disciples walked up and said, who sinned, him or his father? Opinion. Who sinned, him or his parents? Opinion. Who did the wrong thing? What did he do wrong to be born blind? I'm not blind. Why is he blind? He must have did something wrong. Opinion. And Jesus said, neither him nor his parents. Uh oh Neither him nor his parents caused him to be born blind, but he was born that way so that the works of God might be made manifest in him. So Jesus healed him, but it just happened to be a Sabbath day. So when we talk about the source, the opinion of source is because I see, and it's not the way I perceive it to be. Uh, when I look at you, it looks like things are in disarray. Uh, I don't know how God made you. I, I don't have time to question him because my opinion of you is greater than what God's opinion of you is. God's opinion was, I'm going to cause you to be born blind, but you're going to manifest my glory in a whole new way. But the opinion was, he was born blind because he sinned. But the source of this is all God. The source was not the man. The source was not his parents. The source was not the community. The source of this was all God. So you got to check the opinion, you got to check the source of where the opinion is coming from. If an opinion comes to you about you and how you are and how you live, you got to check the source. Criticism comes to invalidate your faith. It wants to weaken your faith. 
Anytime people come to you to criticize you because you're trying to do the work of God, because you are, even if you are sitting in the presence of God, anytime that criticism comes, the purpose of that criticism is to invalidate your faith. It starts with, you ain't. That's what it says. You ain't. You ain't saved, you sin. That's why you're blind. You ain't blessed, that's why you whatever. That's a criticism. That's the opinion of source. The second opinion is the opinion of success. The opinion of success is what I call victory. The man was born blind, right? Come on now. The man was born blind, right? And now God has healed him. Jesus Christ has healed him. That's a victory. Wait a minute. Y'all not praying with me. Look, the man was born blind. You couldn't help him. I couldn't help him. Couldn't nobody help him. But here comes Jesus, spits in the ground, makes some mud, puts it on his eyes, tell him to go wash, and the man is victorious over the blindness. So the opinion of success is, wait a minute. How did this happen? I got a question. How did this happen? In, in, in this chapter, in verse 17, they call the blind man, the Pharisees call the blind man and they ask him, how is it that you became blind? How, how, how is it that you can see now? I thought you was born blind. They're criticizing his success. They have an opinion. Their opinion is this ain't supposed to happen this way. But don't you know that God knows what he's doing? Don't you know that God knows how to do it? Don't you know that God does things that we can't do? Don't you know that God doesn't ask us what to do? That God just goes ahead, and he just goes ahead and he does it. But then they called his parents. They called his parents and they said, parents, come before us and tell us, is this your son? They say, yeah. Well, why can't he see now? I thought he was born blind. They said, we don't know. Ask him. He's of age. See, the opinion, once I can't stop you, I go to those who are closest to you. Because what I want to do is I want to frame you in this prison of imbalance and insecurity. So I use my opinion to victimize you. And it's all, and it's all in your mind. The last opinion I want to talk about is the opinion of support, your base. In, in John chapter 9, in verse 19 and through 23, the parents are, are asking, the parents are asking the question. They're telling him, ask our son. He's of age. He can answer this question. But, but here's what the support is. The support is the base. The Pharisees say, if you believe in Jesus, stick with me now. If you believe in Jesus, if you confess that he is Lord, you're out of our synagogue. You're out of our system. Our opinion is, if you believe, not like we believe, but if you believe anything different than what we believe, we're putting you out. You can't be in our clique. You can't be in our club. You're not a good old boy anymore. If you believe in Jesus, and the Pharisees did not believe in Jesus, if you believe in Jesus, if you believe that he's the son of God, if you believe that he has the power to heal on the Sabbath day, if you believe that he has the power to give sight to the blind, if you believe that he can make the dead get up and walk, if you believe that he can make water into wine, if you believe in Jesus, you don't be, you're not allowed to be in our circle. That's what they were saying. Their, their base was themselves. The parents were under the stronghold of the Pharisees. They had a stranglehold on the community. They had a stranglehold on the, on the Jewish life. See, the Pharisees said, if you're not a part of the synagogue, that means, number one, you can't pray. Number two, you can't get any assistance. Number three, you're, ex, you're excommunicated from all activities, social or otherwise. We're going to put you out. You know what the Pharisees were? They were bullies. They were just bullies. They were bullies 
uh, wanting to have their way, and so they enforced it using what God provided to hold it against the people who decided to believe in Jesus, the people who decided to follow Jesus. Bullies, just bullies. And you, uh, we all know what bullies are. We, we think about bullies in school, but, but bullies are those people who say, if you don't believe like I believe, you can't be in my club. Bullies are those who say, don't like him because I don't like him. Isn't that childish? It is very childish. But bullies exist today. And because they exist, we have to have freedom from their opinion in order to experience the freedom that God designed for us. And that freedom starts in our mind. The story is the big old elephant, the great big giant elephant, they put a little peg in the ground, they tie his foot to the peg, and he can't move. He cannot move. After a while, they remove the peg, they free him, but in his mind, he can't move because he is so conditioned to the, to the treatment of the bully that held him back for so long, he cannot move forward, he cannot move on his own because he is trapped in his mind. Jesus came and said, uh, look, I'm, I'm going to free you. I'm going I'm to free you. I'm going to spit on the ground. That would have scared me right then. I'm going to spit on the ground. I'm going to make some mud, and I'm going to put it on your eyes. You're going to put it on my what? I'm going to put it on your eyes. Now you go and find your way to the pool and wash. And he did it. Well, we've talked about the opinions, but now let's talk about how do we gain victory over fear? That's very, very important. It's not good just for us to learn what the text is saying, but we also have to ha have those things inside the text. That's why we got to study God's word, because we have to understand what's going on inside of the text to help us understand how to gain victory over fear. Victory over fear. The fears that have trapped us for so long, the, the fears that have captivated us, the, the fears that bind us, we got to get victory over those fears. I admit it that I'm a workaholic, that I got a fear, because when I was a kid, my godmother used to say, boy, get up and, you know, pick that paper up. Stop being trifling. And then when I really act up, she'd say, you lazy and trifling. And I can't stand a man who is lazy and trifling. And so with me... That's stuck in my mind, and I always have to do something. I got to do something. I, I got to move something. I got to rearrange something. I got to straighten up something. I got to clean something. I got to wash something. I got to rinse something. I got to fold something. I got to hang up something because I don't want to be lazy and trifling. My wife will tell me, you need to sit down and rest sometime. I say, okay, I'll sit down. Three minutes later, I'm up. I'm moving. I'm doing something because I'm afraid to rest because if I rest the opinion that has been forced upon me says you're going to be lazy and trifling boy don't you see that down there on the floor get up and get it it's going to be late look it's going to be there my sister-in-law says look if anything happens don't call me and wake me up I'm resting call me tomorrow because whatever's going on today it'll still be going on tomorrow now, how can we gain victory over fear? How can we gain victory over the opinions of others? How can we do it? Well, the Bible says, it says it very, very clearly. The first thing is, stay focused on your source. Take your focus off of the opinions of others and place your focus on your source. God is your source. Keep your focus on the source. In Exodus chapter 16, in Exodus chapter 16, uh, uh, chap verse 2, it says, the whole community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. Here they are leading the people out of Egypt. And they're taking them out of captivity. They're taking them out of oppression. Y'all still with me? Stay with me now. They're taking them out of oppression. They're leading them out. And all of a sudden, they have the Red Sea. 
uh, the Lord opens the Red Sea. They march through the Red Sea. As they march through the Red Sea, God does something tremendous. He allows the Egyptians to get into the Red Sea, and he collapses the ocean so that they're all drowned, so their enemies are gone away now. They don't have any fear, but they don't have any bread. This is exactly six weeks after they first left Egypt. See, it doesn't really take a long time to lose your focus. It doesn't take long at all. But Moses and Aaron, they kept their focus on the Lord. They didn't focus on the criticism. They didn't focus on the opinions of others. They focused on the Lord. Because the Lord, the Bible says in Exodus chapter 16, that the Lord came and said, today you're going to eat meat. You're going to eat meat and you're going to eat bread. Wait a minute. They were grumbling to Moses and Aaron about something that they should have been talking to God about. And when they did grumble about it, Moses and Aaron did not take their focus off of what they were doing. They stayed focused on the source. They said, God, you hear the grumbling of the people. They're not grumbling against us. They're grumbling against you. You are the deliverer. You are the almighty. You are the creator. And what they're grumbling about, only you can fix that situation. The Lord said, I'm going to fix it. I'm going to send them meat. I'm going to send them bread. But when I send you meat, I'm not going to send you pigeons. I'm going to send you quail. I'm going to send you the best of meat. And when I send you this meat, here's what you got to know. You've got to only eat so much. The Lord says, I will test you. Exodus 16, I will test them. So they got the meat and they were greedy. And it rotted in their mouth. They got the bread. He says, only collect enough of what you need in one day. Oh, there had to be some people in there that was kind of greedy because they gathered more than what they need. And said so they got up in the morning, it was all full of maggots. But when you keep your eyes on the source, when you stay focused on the source, not only do you see the source, but you're obedient to the source. You understand what the source is doing. The source is testing you to prove that you are reliable for another step in him. Yeah. Stay focused. That's how you overcome that fear. You overcome that fear of opinion by not looking, by not listening but saying, focus on God. God, I hear you. God, I see you. God, I understand what you're doing. I don't understand it fully. I don't understand it completely. But my eyes are on you. The second way is to stand firm in your success. To stand firm in your success. Don't cower down. Well, I don't know. Maybe the law didn't. No, no, no. Stand firm in your success. Well, I don't know. It could have been luck. No, luck don't have nothing to do with it. If you're God's child, luck don't have a thing to do with it. It's all about his blessing. It's all about his power. It's all about his will in your life. Once you stand firm on your success, the enemy cannot defeat you with his opinion. Once you stand firm in the victory that God has given you, the enemy cannot defeat you. In Daniel chapter 3, we have the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were brought from their homeland to another land. They were brought as slaves to serve the king. They were brought from their home country to a whole nother country, had to learn a whole new language. Their names were changed. And some of you who understand black history, you know where I'm going with this. But they were brought to a whole nother society and their minds were stripped, ripped, and torn apart so that they can embrace this brand new opinion of the king. But God blessed them in this new land. God multiplied them in this new land. God gave them wisdom in this new land. God gave them something wonderful in this new land. And when he did it, he did it in front of those people who had the opinion. They stood firm. Remember, they said, we, we'll just eat vegetables. Remember that? Yeah, okay. So, so what happens? Nebuchadnezzar builds a statue. 
And he says, when you hear the music player, you better dance to the piper. That's what he says. And, 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 and so the music was playing, but they didn't dance. They stood firm. My God is awesome. He can move the mountains. He can keep me in the valley. He can hide me from the rain. Somebody is praying with me. I feel it. So because they stood firm in what God was doing in their life, they, come, they, came, they came under heavy criticism from their enemies, from those people who were jealous of them, from those people who were envious of their position. They were jealous because God had raised them up. They came as slaves, but now they got position. They came as low people, but now they're highly esteemed. Y'all ain't praying with me right now. Y'all getting scared because you think I'm going to say something. I'm not going to say nothing. I'm just going to tell you what God will do. See, if you humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, he will lift you up. And here's God lifting them up, not because because of the opinions of people, but because they stood firm in their faith. King calls them and says, look, I've heard about you. I've heard that you didn't bow down, but I'm going to give you one more chance. The music is playing. You can bow down right now. They remained humble. They remained humble. They say, oh, king, live forever. We don't even need to answer you about this. See, here's what the deal is. God has kept us. God brought us here. We got here safely. God has kept us. God has provided for us. God has given us wisdom when we didn't understand. God has taught us how to endure. God has given us perseverance. God has given us more compassion. God has given us more love. We came here with nothing, but now God has blessed us with something. God has done some incredible things in our life, and so we are standing firm in the victory of God. We're saying if God desires, if it's his will, to deliver us from this fiery furnace, so be it. But if he does not, we know that he is still God. We know that he is still able. We know that he is still almighty. We know that he is still powerful. We know that he can blow and the fire will go out. But if he does not, we're still serving. You got to stand firm in your success. You can't just be wishy-washy. Because the opinions of others always comes at a time where we are tested, where we are tried, where we are weakened in our faith. That's where people start saying, well, maybe if I was you, see, I, I do this with my taxes, I do this with my check, I do, no, 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 no. I'm going to still give to the Lord. Why? Because he is good. Not because I got needs. No, because he is good. His mercy endures forever. I'm going to give to my church because the Lord is good. His loving kindness endures forever. Y'all not going to say amen right now because I'm talking about giving, but I'm telling you that as long as you stand firm in the success and the victory that God has given you, he will bless you he will keep you he will lift you up and in the fiery furnace the opinions of others won't mean a thing Bible says as a matter of fact the king came down and says I thought we put in three now I see four he didn't say I see four he said I see four I see the fourth one walking around they're all walking around they got their hands up they're praising God the fourth one has a different look, though. He doesn't look like Shadrach. He doesn't look like Meshach. He doesn't look like Abednego. He looks like the Son of God. The Son of God has joined them in the midst of the fire. He hasn't brought them out, but he got in the fire with them, and he's protecting them. Wait a minute. Open the door. Bring them out and put their enemies in the fire. When you stand firm. When you stand firm, that's what he'll do. He'll give you victory. The last thing is you can speak fearless, fearlessly of your support. That's how you overcome. Remember, the Pharisees were bullies. The Pharisees were bullies. Anyone who tries to tell you how to worship, who to worship with, what to believe, uh, what's true and what's not? Okay, let me break it down. This was the Sabbath day. On, and Moses taught them, and they had lived this all through. On, don't do any work on the Sabbath. Don't do anything on the Sabbath. 
They forgot about when Joshua said, six days you'll walk around on the seventh day, you'll blow your horn. They forgot about that. This is what they knew. On the Sabbath, we're not supposed to do anything. So if you do anything, you're out. They forgot that whatever Jesus did, Sabbath, as he said, the Sabbath was made for man. I'm not made to, to obey the rule of man. I'm not, I'm not supposed to obey the rule of the Sabbath. But you have to speak fearlessly of the God who has delivered you. You must speak fearlessly of the God who has protected you. The blind man didn't know who Jesus was. Remember? He was blind. He couldn't see. Mud was put on his eyes and he was told to go wash. He didn't know what Jesus looked like. He didn't see him. <laughs> okay, speak fearlessly. In verse 24 and 25, they, the Pharisees said, we know this man is a sinner. You see that? Verse 24, you see that? We know this man is a sinner. Verse 24, we know this man is a sinner. Opinion. Opinion. Well, you know, they not, they not, when, when the preacher preach, he not, uh, 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 he not moaning like the other preachers do. So we know this man is a sinner. When the deacons serve, they don't seem to be serving with the white gloves on. So we know this man is a sinner. Uh, the, the ladies come to church and they're wearing pants these days. They must be a sinner. Anytime it doesn't go your way and you call somebody a sinner, you're out of the will of God. Because only God knows the heart. Yeah, you're out of the will of God. But you got to speak fearlessly. The Pharisees, the Pharisees, the people who were supposed to know God, who had, who had studied the scriptures, who knew where he was coming, who knew when he was coming, they, they knew all of these things. They, they, it was right there in the scriptures for them. Why couldn't they just look and understand? They say, we know this man is a sinner. Their opinion was he's a sinner because he doesn't do what we do. He doesn't shout the way we shout. He doesn't say hallelujah the way we say hallelujah. He doesn't do anything the way that we do it. And you know who we are? We the holy people of God. We the righteous people of God. This is what the sinner man said. The blind man. I'm sorry. The blind man said this. Whether he's a sinner or not, I don't know. That's, that's boldness right there. See, the Pharisees were also an authority. And so he spoke fearlessly, still with humility. Look, whether he's a sinner or not, I don't know. I ain't got that information. See, only God can determine what he is. But this is the one thing that I do know. I was blind, but now I see. Ho, oh, oh. ho. Y'all not with me. I don't know if he's a sinner or not. I don't know about his life behind closed doors. I don't know about his walk with God. I can't judge his prayer time. I don't understand his Bible reading. But this is the one thing that I know. I was blind, but now I see. I was blind, but now I see. I was bound, but now I'm free. I was lost, but he found me. I was a sinner, but he changed my condition, and now I walk with him. I couldn't pray, but now I can. I once was blind. That's all I know. And I'm going to speak fearlessly about that. I'm going to tell you what I know. I know you're in authority. I know you got clout. I know you got a system. I know you got money. I know you got all those things. But here's the one thing that I know about Jesus. And I'm going to tell you what I know about Jesus. I can tell you what he did for me. I can't tell you what he's doing in your life, but I can tell you what he's done for me. He said, I was blind. But now, not because you did anything, not because you prayed, not because you anointed me, but I was blind. But now I see. That's the support. I know who God is, and this is what the Lord has done for me, and I'm not afraid to tell anybody. I'm not going to back down and say, well, I don't know who did it for me. I don't know where it came from. No, I know. It was God. 
It was God who made me. It was God who established me. It was God who did all these things. The only thing I know is that I was blind, but now I see. When you speak fearlessly against those who have opinions about your God, speak with humility, they do what the devil does. They leave you. Only for a short time, but they leave you. They leave you alone. They say, oh, that fool crazy. <laughs> they just leave you alone. Because no one wants to be confronted when they're bullied. Everybody wants to be agreed with when they're a bully. They want you to buy into their policy, but you can stand up and you can say, no, this is what I know. I don't know about whoever, uh, I don't know who about, uh, about anybody's life, but this is what I know. I was down, and they comforted me. Uh, I was sick, and they visited me. Uh, I didn't have, and they provided for me. Uh, I, I, they sat with me in my weakest moment and encouraged me. And when you speak fearlessly about what people uh, don't want to hear, they will leave you. They'll shut you right on out. But that's a good thing. That's a good thing. It's okay. It's okay. It's a good thing because what that does is as soon as those negative voices leave your mind, then that's what happens in, in, in Matthew chapter 4. The angels will come and minister to you. And they will restore and strengthen you. Fear. Fear. Fear of opinions is a tool of the enemy. It's a tool of the enemy. A tool, when you use it the right way, accomplishes a great deal. Fear of opinions is a tool of the enemy. Never, never ever place anyone's opinion higher than the Lord's opinion of you. God says, I no longer call you stranger. I no longer call you are my friend. Hold that. Hold on to that. God says, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Hold that. Hold on to that. He says, when your trouble come to me and cast all your anxiety on me because I care for you, hold on to that. Hold on to that. Don't get the opinion, that, uh, don't believe the opinion that God don't love you, that God don't like you, that God can't stand you, that you're not in his will. God says, it's my will and I'll direct you, I'll lead you, and I'll guide you. I'll lead and guide you through all ways of truth. I like what David said in the song. Yay. I go uh, King James Version on you here. Yay. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because my source, you are with me. You lead me, you guide me, and you comfort me. You strengthen me. Hold on to that and overcome this difficult thing called the fear of opinions. This story is more than just a story of the miracle. Many times we look at the story of the miracle and we're ready to shout over the miracle. The man was blind, but now he sees. But what God is really telling us is the fear of opinions can be overcome. Don't you understand? 40 years, that's how old he was, 40 years of hearing you're blind and you ain't never going to be nothing. That was an opinion. Just imagine, here this man was 40 years being told he would never be nothing. He would always be a beggar. He couldn't do anything. But all of a sudden, here comes Jesus. And when Jesus comes, he says, no, you are here that the work of God might be manifested. You see the Pharisees in the Bible, but you don't see their name. All right, let me, let me finish this. The story of victory over fear. The story of victory over fear. The victory starts when we come to Christ. The victory starts when you accept Christ in your heart. So let's eliminate this thing called fear. Let's get rid of this thing called fear. We're getting ready for the Daniel fast. We're starting the Daniel fast. Let's get rid of it. Let's eliminate it. Let's eliminate it from our life. Let's move away from it. Let's back out of these opinions of people. Let's forget about what they said, about what they think. Let's move forward in the Lord and stay focused on our source.
Let's move ahead in the Lord and stand firm in the successes that he's provided. Don't you know you're worthy of everything that God has given you? You're not worthy because you earned them, but you're worthy because he said you're worthy. People come and bless you. It's not because they ain't got nothing else to do. It's because God has lifted you to the position of blessing. You are worthy. And most of all, let's speak freely of our support. Let's stand up and say, I know the Lord. I know he's made a way. I know that he's good. I know that he'll do it. And if he did it for me once, he can do it again. Let's speak freely, fearlessly, about the support that God gives us in our life. Luck has nothing to do with it. You are blessed of the Lord. And because you are blessed of the Lord, walk in that blessing and enjoy that blessing. Be humble and obedient in that blessing. And God will remove all fear from your life. He who the sun sets free is free indeed. He or she who the sun sets free is free indeed. He, she, them, they, we, us who the sun sets free, is free indeed. Free in your mind, free in your soul, and free in your body. God bless you. Would you join me in prayer? Father, we ask that you will bless us now, that you will keep us now, that you will be with us, and you will allow us to stay focused, to stand firm, and to speak fearlessly, because you are God. Are our source. We bless you and we honor you and we pray, God, that you will keep us as in the days going forward in our fast. And as you do, God, unite the body of Christ. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. Praise God. Let's give him a great big hand praise, everyone. Well, praise God. We've heard a wonderful, powerful message from the Lord through our pastor. And our only response is to respond obediently. So if you who are listening, those who are visiting with us, if you have not yet come to know the one who is our source, who gives us success, and who will support us in every situation, I'm talking of Jesus, the opportunity is here. If you're visiting with us online, you too can accept Christ if you have not yet done so. That process is very simple. Just repeat after me this prayer. Lord, I am a sinner. I need you. I confess that I cannot do anything apart from you. You are my source of life. You are my source for eternity. I welcome you into my heart and I want to live for you come into me take control lead me guide me transform me into the image of your son Jesus it's in the name of Jesus I pray it's that simple you are now a part of God's family and for those that have made that commitment, we celebrate you this morning. Let us give those who have accepted Christ a hand of praise. Amen. 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 So if you have accepted Christ, those of you that are present at the end of our service, if you would remain in your seats, someone will speak with you about the process of how to become a disciple of Christ and a member of this church. If you're looking for a church home and you're visiting with us online, please contact us, office at crossroadsdesoto.org, and someone will contact you and explain to you that process as well. Amen? Amen. Have just a few announcements, and we're going to be ready to close. Amen? We've already talked about our Daniel Fast. It starts at 6 p.m. today. If you have downloaded our app, I hope that you have, there is a guide of how to go through this 21-day period 
of drawing closer to Christ. There's a menu. There's also a, a focus of what the fast is. Please know that this is not a diet. This is not the annual diet. Okay? If you have concentrated on merely of the foods to eat or not to eat, you're missing the point. The, the point is to draw closer to Christ, to allow him to transpose or to replace all of those things that have taken over and have become idols. This is the opportunity for us to proclaim that Christ still reigns in our hearts. Amen? Amen. So our small groups, don't forget, our small groups does start today. If you've received our emails, if you haven't, please let us know, and we will make sure that you get communications how to connect with a small group. We want you to be a part of the small group ministry that has begun, uh, that continues in Crossroad. All right, last thing I want to just remind you of how to give. We're offering, uh, we're accepting your gifts, and we can do that in several different ways. If you want to text your gift, you can do that at 84321. That's 84321. Any amount, tithes, offerings, or other, at that number, and we will receive your gifts. If you'd like to give online, uh, you can do so as well at crossroadscov.tv slash give. And that process will be laid out for you as well. Or if you want to do it the old-fashioned way, write that check out and send it by mail. You can do so at Crossroads Covenant Church, 647 East Pleasant Run Road, DeSoto, Texas, 75115. Amen? All right. So we're now ready to be dismissed. I'm going to bring back to the stage our worship leader. She's going to guide us through Aaron's blessing. Once you stand... And she will guide you through that process. And I'll come up and give a closing prayer after that. Will you please stand and raise your hands so we can both receive and extend the blessing. to shine on you. our closing prayer. Father, may we stay focused on you, our source. May we stand firm in the success that you have provided in and through us. And Lord, we pray for the boldness and the courage to speak fearlessly of you. We pray, O God, that in doing so, we glorify you. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. 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 You are dismissed. Please follow the directions.